Hello out there, high water viewers, future engineers, current engineers, people interested in engineering, whoever you are, welcome to today's lecture where we're going to be talking specifically about forward kinematics. Now this lecture is part of an upcoming little mini series, a two or three part series on forward and reverse kinematics. But obviously today we are going to focus specifically on forward kinematics, certainly the less complex of the two in terms of discussion. So we'll start here, follow up with the reverse kinematics, which are certainly the more applicable and useful. And, uh, you know, there's a whole field revolving around uh, inverse kinematics with robotics, uh, VR, um, other, well, that's the, probably the big two right there. Um, so what are forward kinematics and, and even inverse kinematics? We'll, we'll talk a little bit about both of those before we dive into how to solve these sorts of problems. So forward kinematics specifically, let me get a pin going. No, oh, hold on. Uh, for some reason my system seems to have changed a little bit. Okay, so with forward kinematics, we're gonna have a, a, a system of typically two link robots in a plane are, is a very common application. And actually, let's go ahead and start sort of drawing some of this out. So when we have a system like this, where we, we know our length of one link and our length of our second link and a theta angle Let's call this theta one, theta two. Uh, and we are interested in this point X, Y. So this would be the hand or the claw or whatever is at the end of our robot arm that is comprised in this case of two links, right? And so once you have more than one essentially is when you're gonna start applying, in this case, forward kinematics. So forward kinematics is when we have our angles and our lengths and we are interested in really what is the location at the tip of, of this arm. And we, it basically it comes in two steps. We need to find what is our X component of L1 and what is our X component of L2 for our PX. So once we have these two, they add together for PX and then we do the same thing in the vertical direction. So P1, or excuse me, L1, Y, L2, Y is gonna give us our P, Y. And then of course, once we have P, X and P, Y, we've solved the problem. Now the issue here, the little bit of a trick, actually let's, let's go ahead and do the obvious easy one, which is L1, all right? So with L1, when we solve our first link, typically we're, that's what we're going to do. We're going to start out jumping right into solving our first link, right? This one's the certainly easier. Uh, so we have L1 here. Let's go ahead and finish this out. L2, theta 2, and our point. Okay. L1 is probably obvious if you're, if you're used to working with trigonometry. So in this case, we have a triangle with a known side and an angle. So we're good, right? Because this is a right triangle, or we can sort of, you know, make this right triangle here. So in this case, our X component is going to be our adjacent component. So this will be our adjacent side. This will be our opposite side. So we know that this is going to be L1, our total length of this link, cosine theta one. And that is going to give us this component here. Uh, and then we'll do the same thing on our Y component. So L1, again, our total length, sine theta one is going to give us the uh, vertical height of our first link. Now, and of course this is, we're working in uh, quadrant one. If you were working in 
some other quadrant you would need to adjust. So in this case, you're going to have negative L1 cosine theta 1. Uh, but of course, your vertical component would be the same in quadrant two. So whatever quadrant you are in, you will have to make adjustments. But we'll just focus on the uh, on our on quadrant one. All right. So link one was easy. Link two is a little bit more, you know, involved. So we have theta one, L one, theta two. L2 and a point. Okay, how do we do the same thing for theta 2 really is what we're trying to figure out. So what we need to do, because we don't have, if we were to look at this, we don't have a right angle, right? So we can't just jump right into using sine or cosine. We need a right angle to work off of. Now, if we had a straight arm here, an arm where theta 2, oops, where theta 2 was not rotated, so in this case theta 2 equals 0, it doesn't matter what theta 1 is, right? It's Theta 2 is going to be 0 because there's no rotation. This would be like if you held your arm perfectly out straight and didn't bend your elbow at all, theta 2 would, for your elbow would be 0. And as you as you rotate your elbow, then you're creating a rotation for theta 2. So, but that's not the same. We can't just solve this as a zero angle, right? If, if we were in this kind of situation, we could just say cosine zero, right? And then times L2. Because in this case, all of our link two would be horizontal. But obviously in this case, it's not, right? We have some amount of uh, horizontal and some amount of vertical component. So we need to figure out what, in this case, what is this angle, right? Theta two is zero, but what is this angle to the horizontal so that we can use our sine and cosine functions. Well, it turns out that it, you know, and hopefully this is obvious, well, I didn't draw this perfectly, but this angle is theta one. And really this is a straight line because there's no rotation at, at the elbow or at theta two. So really we're just expressing the angle in a different, point along the same line, right? So we're going to have the same angle. Um, okay, so how do we use that with our original type of problem? Well, we just add theta one. Now, we do have the angle from the horizontal, or we have two angles that add up to the horizontal. So what we can do here, now this, so we already know our our L1x, oops, stop. Okay. We know our L1x, our L2x is gonna be our length L2 again, times cosine of theta one plus theta two. That is how we get this part uh, of our second length, or our X component of our second link or our, you know, L2 component of our entire arm. And we do the same thing up here for our vertical component from here to here. We have L2 sine theta one plus theta two. Sorry, I kind of ran out of room there. And at this point, it's probably, I think I have one more. Yeah, so a little bit more space here. Um, actually, this is talking about that, what we just discussed. So then all we have to do is add them together. Theta two, theta one, our point. So our point X is LX one plus LX two. And we can express that as L one cosine theta one plus L two cosine 
cosine theta 1 plus theta 2. Okay? That is our x component of our point. And we can do the same thing, of course, for whoops, our y component here. So we have sine theta 1. I'll just write this out real quick. So hopefully this is pretty obvious what's going on by now, if it wasn't already. So our uh, vertical component for our first and second link, L1, Y, L2, Y, right? Um, okay, and that, I believe, is all I have, yes, for our forward kinematics. Uh, I hope that answered any questions or interest you might have had in forward kinematics. We will follow this up with our inverse kinematics, which are certainly going to get more involved. So in inverse kinematics, we know our, whoops, well, I lost my pen, but we know our Uh, in either case, we know our links, but in inverse, we know our point, and we're interested in what are the theta 1 and theta 2 angles. So, in this case, either, you know, there's a, something you want to grab, and you know the location of the thing you want to grab, and you need to figure out what are the angles to get me there, um, would be the, an application of inverse kinematics. So, thank you for watching this episode, as always. And uh, I hope to see you in our next one on inverse kinematics. Thank you.